Let's manage our firewall in Windows Admin Center. We're actually connected to our local computer, but you can be connected to any computer in your domain. I'm going to click on Firewall, and that way I can show you what it looks like by going into the Control Panel and looking at the firewall changes that we're about to make. Click on Windows Defender Firewall. And I'm going to choose the advanced settings, and then I'm going to choose the inbound rules. So I'm going to make a new rule, and it'll show up here as well. All right, so we are in Firewall and Windows Admin Center, and we have the option for the three different types of networks, domain, private, and public. And we can see that they're all turned on right now. Now, if I click on Incoming Rules... I can do similar things that I could do if I was in the Windows Defender Firewall in the control panel, such as I can disable a rule or I can enable a rule, bring it back up, and you can see on the top right hand side the different things that are happening as I click them and then they disappear after a little bit. I can also delete or click on settings of that rule and make changes such as the direction, incoming, outgoing, the action allowed or blocked, and other options as well. So I'm going to create a new incoming rule. So click on new, and we'll just say incoming 5000. And we'll show that the direction is incoming, which is fine. I'm going to say that this is allowed. I'm going to enable the firewall rule by clicking off to the right, and now it turns blue and says yes. Scroll down. Now I have the option for the protocol. I'm going to say that this is going to be a TCP rule for transport control protocol, which is a connection-oriented protocol. And I'll put in 5,000. And the remote port is also going to be 5,000. So what you can do is you can have a different incoming port in the firewall and then the uh, port that goes to the device where you're trying to forward it to. You can have it be a different port if you'd like. In most cases, that doesn't make sense, but in some cases, in advanced situations, it might. Now I have those three profiles that I showed you earlier. You have domain, private, and public. So basically, if it's a domain situation, then it would apply, but not necessarily if it was a private or public. Well, it makes sense to make the rule apply to all three different connection types. Uh, public would be as if you were in a public area such as a Starbucks, which obviously doesn't happen with servers very often. Private would be if you don't have a, an Active Directory domain. And then, of course, domain is when you do have an Active Directory domain. So we'll just select them all just to be on the safe side and click Create. So it's creating our new firewall, as you see in the top right-hand side. And there's our incoming 5000 rule. If we want, we can click on settings and make changes to it, such as uh, IP address. We could lock it down to a specific IP. Specific programs or services was not selected, so that's not going to be an option. Remote computers were also not an option as well. And we see remote users and advanced. So we'll close that. Now let's just go to our advanced firewall, and we'll just confirm that our rule is in place on inbound. So I'll just hit the refresh, and we scroll down, and there it is, our incoming 5000 rule. And if I do something such as disable the rule here, then it will also disable the rule in our Windows Admin Center. And that's because this is just a reflection of what's happening on the server itself. The uh, website is just linking us to what's happening there. So, if we go to the status, we see now that it is disabled. And if we decide we no longer need it, we can click Delete. And now it's going to go away after a quick refresh. So that's how we manage the firewall in our Windows Admin Center. And you can manage any computer that you have added into your Windows Admin Center in the home page.